Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic and today uh, we're going to be doing a challenge that has been issued to me by you guys multiple times now and that is a challenge to build an ant weight and more accurately a competitive ant weight uh, without using my 3D printer. Now I'm going to take this a little bit further than that. I want to try and do this with mostly just this drill. Uh, there is going to be some stuff that I have to do without the drill. Obviously soldering I can't do with a drill, although that would be very impressive. Um, and there's going to be a few little bits and pieces I'll have to do with hand tools, but the main power tool I want to use is this one specific drill. Uh, I will say though, before I get started with this challenge, I, I like I said, I get this challenge posted in the comments a fair amount. And while it's an interesting challenge, and I definitely want to take this on, if you are asking me to do this because you personally don't have a 3D printer at home and want to see what a build looks like without a 3D printer, uh, there are ways that you can get access to 3D printers even if you don't have one at home. So I really, really suggest that if you are struggling and don't have a 3D printer, look into local libraries, local maker spaces, local hacker spaces, local fab labs, men's sheds, anywhere that there is a community gathering of people uh, that have something to do with building, you will most likely find a 3D printer that is either free for public use at a time limit, or you pay for the materials, or you pay an entry to a space and then pay for printer time. But normally these things are quite affordable and you should be able to print a whole ant weight chassis for you know, 10, 15 bucks, something like that, which is going to be easier to do than uh, doing all of the stuff that I'm about to do. Uh, anyway, with that said, I do want to dive on into this challenge. So let's take a look at some parts. Without a 3D printer, the biggest problem is actually connecting to these N20 motors, which are kind of the standard for ant weight combat robots. Uh, they have a three millimeter D shaft on one end, and then they have an interesting kind of rounded body on the other. Now, uh, the easiest way out of this problem, rather than to 3D print uh, a D shaft and a motor mount is to buy them. So that's what I've got here. I've got Pololu wheels and N20 motor mounts, which I believe I just found all of this stuff on eBay. The ones on eBay aren't the cheapest. If you go on your favorite direct from uh, China site, you will find these things for like cents on the dollar. But uh, yeah, I wanted to do this really quickly. So I got these ones from eBay. And then we have at the back here, this is a project box or a Jiffy box. This is a box that is actually designed to house electronics projects. So there are uh, ridges inside to hold PCBs and things. Uh, you'll find them at any kind of good electronics supply store or again online somewhere. The reason I've done a box like this is A, it cuts down on the amount of work that I have to do. If I'd bought a flat sheet, I would then have to cut that flat sheet and fold it. And it's probably not gonna be anywhere near as dimensionally accurate as this once I'd done all of that work because uh, my work with hand tools is meh. So yeah, bought the box instead and it's going to make life a lot easier. And it's also going to mean that we can really do a lot of this with the drill because I don't have to cut too much. I'm just putting lots of holes in this box uh, and a drill is going to be perfect for a lot of that. Then finally, I'm using one of my old favorites and my old classic, a carbon fiber drone arm. This is going to be a horizontal spinner. We're going to do this very, very similarly to the uh, easy spinner design that I have done before, but this time without any 3D printed components. So the 3D printed chassis is being replaced by this Jiffy box. A big thing is going to be drilling all of these holes uh, into our little project box here. And to do this, I have printed out a couple of paper templates. These just kind of get glued on into the side and uh, they actually don't make a whole lot of sense right now. But realistically, uh, this bigger square is where the uh, N20 motor is gonna poke through. And this other square is literally just a marker point for the middle of that. So I wanna be able to drill through the middle of that. I'm also gonna use each of the other corners and drill through those as well, just so that I make sure that I clear this exact hole. And then the same thing goes with the bottom. The bottom gets glued on, and then where all of the circles are in here, 
That's where all of the drill holes are. All of the big squares are literally just there to give me the center point of each of those circles. And I've got three mil and two mil in here. So realistically, all I need to do is glue this up uh, and then get to drilling. I will also say too, that normally when you do this type of thing, uh, you would use a center punch like this one, which is a spring loaded center punch to mark out the location of where you want to drill. However, I have a feeling this is either going to severely dent and damage this plastic uh, or uh, break it entirely. So instead of using a center punch, I'm actually going to uh, use a pocket knife and very, very carefully uh, notch out a little hole, which will be my starting point for all of these. So let's glue and then uh, drill. I will also say I'm gonna use this thing, which is a step drill. And this step drill will allow me to do three mil, six mil, and then up uh, in steps. So when I'm doing stuff like cutting out the hole for the N20 motor mount, I'm gonna go all the way down to the bottom on it a couple of times actually to make sure I've got enough space. Uh, and then I'll use three mil and two mil drill bits for the bottom pieces. So that didn't go exactly as planned. Uh, yeah, no, I've made a bit of a dog's breakfast of that. Uh, let's see if an N20 will actually fit through there. No, no, not really. Uh, it does not fit through there. In actual fact, we can do it from the inside and it will be easier to show you that does not work. Um, yeah, so I can clean this up with a file, get that to work properly, but I think the next one we might turn around and actually use a, um, a cutoff wheel on a Dremel or similar rotary tool just to get that to work a little bit nicer. We should be able to do the bottom totally fine without any of that stuff because it's literally just eight holes down through the bottom here. But yeah, no, our, tire, our side pieces, uh, yeah, we're gonna need to do these a little bit better because as soon as uh, the drill got into the section where it was hitting more of the edges of the previously drilled holes, it just wandered and did not do what I wanted it to do. Hmm. So it looks like my uh, paper template was ever so slightly off axis. I don't think it's gonna matter all that much in the grand scheme of things, but you can see that we don't quite have, I don't think a quite nice 90 degree angle between these two. Uh, again, I think it's gonna be okay in the grand scheme, but uh, yeah, it would have been nice to have it a little bit more accurate, but that is because I slapped this paper template on rather quickly and uh, didn't really think too much more about it. So I need to clean up this mess and uh, cut the other side, then we'll almost be ready for electronics. I might also, oh yes, I should also cut a uh, switch position too in the top plate because that is going to be an important thing to have. So I messed up and did not hit record on the camera as I was cutting all the pieces, but you can see we've got a notch where I can access the switch now when the lid is on. Uh, we also have a notch for the cables that will go out to the weapon motor. Uh, we have our cleaned up hole and our nice hole and then yeah, everything else is kind of the same. I also made these two little shims. These tiny little shims are four and a half mil HDP, just scrap that I had left over. Uh, and I have cut those so that they sit in underneath uh, the weapon motors, uh, sorry, the drive motors. And they are just gonna be buff blocks to kind of push the motors up a little bit so that the whole thing doesn't sit way, way high up off the ground. Uh, so the next trick is actually gonna be to try this out and to put these in and see how this all works. And everything is in place. And this connector is really, really close to the lid. 
Uh, so that might actually cause problems when I go ahead and put some electronics in. Let's just give that a whirl right now. Uh, see how soon after the plug I can bend this over. Oh, actually, okay, it might be all right. Let's just jam all these electronics in here and see if the lid still goes on with the, uh, the plug in place. Please, 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 uh, that way around. Yeah, okay, it's a little bit tight, but it should actually work. It should be okay. Also, hopefully, if we put on our wheel, what we'll see is, yeah, so we've got a little bit sticking out the top and a lot sticking out the bottom. That should be totally fine to get this thing working. So there we go, it really, really works. This thing hits like a truck. Uh, that is probably to do with the fact that I have a 30 gram blade sitting on the front of here at the moment, which is fairly hefty for this weight class, uh, as is my tradition on this channel. Uh, this of course is a weapon that I had laser cut by a place that laser cuts hardox, so it's a three and a half mil thick hard ox blade or 3.2 mil thick hard ox blade uh but yeah that's the whole build together and without any 3d printed parts at all this has been a fun little challenge um yeah it's a fun little build and also a little bit unfortunately it turns out it doesn't actually drive upside down despite the fact that the wheels do stick out over the top what happens is it sits on the front lip and uh, the wheels don't manage to touch the ground. If I had pushed the wheels forwards more, uh, it would have been able to do that. But how does it fight? Well, to answer that question, uh, you're gonna have to wait until next week's video because uh, this is going in ARC's May meet. So make sure you subscribe to the channel uh, to check out that video when it comes out. And I will see you in the next one.